I'm your host, Local 23, joining me for Desire Decorum, Book 1, Chapter 13, A Better Place! By the way, it's like 2 a.m. on Friday, the day of your father's funeral. You and Ryer are in your bedroom. She brushes your hair as you both stare out the window. I can't believe I'll never hear my father's voice again. Oh, Bella, I know this can't be easy. Pugsley gently nuzzles your ankle and you pat his furry head. Thank you for your support, Pugsley. The last few days have felt like weeks, but I'm... Hmm. Still in shock. Ready to my father's wrong. Worried about the claim. Um... <clears throat> I would say still grieving, not really in shock, but uh, but I guess we'll go still in shock. I've never seen both of my parents pass right before my eyes, but with Mama I knew it was coming, but this doesn't even feel real. At least you were able to spend his, his last moments together. Your father died knowing who you were, and he loved, and he died loved. Briar gives your shoulder a light squeeze, and you let out a deep breath. I will make it through this day, Father. Your presence is, is just like his, my dear. Your grandmother slowly strides into your room, dressed in her morning wear. I'll give you both a moment. Briar scoops up Pugsley and scuttles you out of the room. Or scuttles out of your bedroom, sorry. Lady Grandmother, he was always so strong-willed, and when he was a boy, he pecked me to have our master of horse teach him to ride. At the time, his, he didn't even touch the stirrups, but he refused to let that stop him. It was the most... Grandmother's eyes start to well with tears, and she stands frozen. I miss him already. You rush over to your grandmother and wrap your arms around her. She holds you close. As do I. I'm, I'm so thankful he and I reconciled our differences when we had the time. What do you mean? There were some difficult times between us when he was growing up. Grandmother lets go of your hug and holds you at arm's length. But the... That is all in the past now. You are Edgewater's future. The Dowager Countess straightens your dress and sits poised on the bed. Now then, there is much work to be done if Edgewater is going to stay in the bloodline. I'm ready for all of it. Of course, your father just died. Why not just discuss this now? Good. It's more important than ever to focus on securing your own engagement. It's the only way to ensure the estate falls to you and not Mr. Mulcaster, even though it said so in the will. <laughs> you must not pick any fights with him, lest you wish to be shipping yourself back to Grovershire. I would never. Your grandmother raises an eyebrow at you. I've heard whispers that you can be a bit rough on him at times. I haven't done shit to that man. I've been nice. Perhaps I am sometimes, but the last thing you need today is to cause a commotion at your own father's funeral. You must hold your manners to the highest standard today and gain all the support you can. I'll try my best. And if you don't succeed, the estate will fall, Mr. Malcaster. I think the boy's head would explode after a fortnight of running the estate. So it's crucial to put on your best face. Like I... Oh god, I hate this. I hate this. <clears throat> I've never been the type to give a shit about materialistic things. And so, this book is like, counter me. And how do you suppose I do so? The simplest way would be to dress the part. You won't be able to speak with everyone at the funeral, but if they see you dressed like a lady, you could sway their favor. Oh, versus my Duke's a hazard look? Damn. Your grandmother nods and opens your armoire. 
pulls out a stunning silk black gown on a delicate lace scowl because, of course, you need to show off your assets while going to a funeral. I have this altered for you. You should dress like you're already the lady of the estate. Lady Grandmother, it's gorgeous. Wear in the memorium to show all the funeral goers your solidarity for with Edgewater and gain support for your claim. Uh-huh. Yep. Nothing, nothing gains solidarity and support like I'm wearing all black. Um, <laughs> dedicated to the ones who came before. Shouldn't this have been free? Especially since it's yours, your grandmother's that she had tailored for you, for you. Again, keyword for you. And is in your estate. No, I'd rather go in blue and white. Why not? It's funeral colors anyway. I will prove I'm the lady of state through my actions, not my clothing. Are you sure, my dear? Absolutely. I want people to recognize me for the woman my father knew me as. Changed your mind? No, because screw you, Pixelberry. Your grandmother stops in the doorway before leaving. You've made your father proud since your arrival. Don't stop short now. Later, at the chapel. As people arrive, you walk towards the front pew. You hear whispering as you take your seat on the old wooden bench. I can do this. Ahem! <coughs> oh, God. Out to see Henrietta, Mr. Marlcaster. You were, uh, you were going to sit there. This row is reserved for family only. The charity case section is behind us. Blood is stronger than marriage. Are you really going to keep me from mourning my father where I choose? It's good to see your spirits haven't been dampened by my dear husband's death. But even you wouldn't deny a widower her proper place. I am here to pay my respects to my father, not to you. I suggest you move, else you risk causing a scene in front of all the gentry here. Who's wisely? <clears throat> Remember what your grandmother said, don't cause a scene, don't cause a scene. If it truly means that much to you, I will move. I would rather sit where I can pay room my respects and peace. You stand and offer your space to Countess Henrietta and Mr. Morrocaster. I will not be reduced to by you. I'm at my father's funeral. Mm, big of you to have been anything but talked and there any event you attend. He looked up, Mr. Morrocaster, who was cowering behind his mother. How are you? I, uh... This, if you actually care how I feel. Tomorrow, Castro looks down to the ground, avoiding your eyes. You see tears welling in his eyes. God rest his soul. You walk to the other side of the church and find a place to... Find a place a couple pews away. You see your grandmother greeting the other people coming in. And Briar sitting with the rest of the servants in their section. I cannot bear this service alone. You look around once more and see uh, some familiar faces start to enter. Uh, let's see who. Mr. Sinclair, Parsons, Harper, and uh, the Prince. Oh, what? No Duke? Oh, man, I'm really sad. Mr. Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair walks in, and before you can call him over, you see him striding past people to get to you. Lady Bella. Words cannot capture my grief. I, I can scarcely imagine yours. Mr. Sinclair, I, you're as chatty as always. You playfully push his arm. I can't bear this service alone. And you won't. Tomorrow, Caster takes a seat next to you. Or, wow, Marl Caster, shit, what the hell? Sorry, I skipped over the name. <laughs> tired, okay? It's 2.30 in the morning. How are you? That he kind of looks like Mario Kasker, and I was, I like, I skimmed, and then I just said it. I'm... Devastated over my father's death. 
Worried about living up to my father's hopes. Angry at the universe. Um... In a way, I could see how you could be angry at the universe, because you're, you know, here you are, you just met your father. You know? And boom, dead. Your mother was taken from you at a very young age. I mean, everybody you know and love is dead. So... And the only family, quote-unquote family, that you have left is Mercer Morrow Caster, who I'm actually thinking about, is probably why I said him, is, is he's your only brother you have left. He's your only family, you know? Half, but still family. Um, so I could see, and, and he's being a complete a-hole because of his mother. <sighs> I, I want to say angry of the universe, but I'm also kind of devastated. It's the type of heartbreak I, I never thought I would know. The hole in my heart that was mended by my father's presence was, has been torn wide open again. I wish I knew what to say to bring you comfort. Your father meant a great deal to me as well. Your presence alone helps me feel better. Mr. Sinclair gives you your, gives your hand a gentle squeeze. If you need anything more than just my presence during the service, let me know. Bishop Monroe walks up to the podium and clears his throat. <clears> throat> oh, Vincent of Edgewater was a man of God and of his people. Here a few sniffles come out of the ground. He used his livelihood and his goods to help the less fortunate when he could. Sometimes too freely. I could say the same to her. His lordship made this world a better place. Now he is resting in a better place of his own. You look to your right and catch Mr. Slayer's eye. May I serve as my lady? I need you to hold my hand. Handkerchief to rest my hand. I hold my hand. Hold out your hand and Mr. Sinclair grasp it in his. I will let go until you say so. Before he died, I, I told my father my interest of, in you. What? 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 Uh, what did he say? He was thrilled. Mr. Sinclair's hands find yours, his voice thick with emotion. Wasn't he already holding our hand? Hi, Pixelberry. You have shit writing. As of late, they do. <clears throat> Bella, that's wonderful news. It father's support, it, it means everything to me. The Earl was will be sorely missed by his community and his family. He leaves behind a doting wife, Dr. Henrietta of Edgewater, a loyal stepson, Mr. Mulcaster, and his daughter, Lady Bella of Edgewater. Bishop nods to you. I invite you all to lay flowers on the casket before we leave. Man to rest. Be with God. You stand and walk to the front of the church and pick up a bouquet of flowers. You quickly find yourself at the front of the line as you trace your fingers over the grooves of the old oak casket. You tell him. So, okay. Keep in mind he did love her. Her mom. He did. And he had all those letters and, and, and his mom, or her mom had plenty of letters. And they, and they wrote. Think about this. While he was with Henrietta, they wrote letters. So, um, he still loved her. He was with Henrietta for the estate, but he, his heart was elsewhere. So, <clears throat> I want to go with my best of mama. Hold back a wall of tears. And finally be with her now. My my heart will rest a little easier knowing that. You are my father forever and always. He'll uh, lay the bouquet of flowers on his casket and walk down the aisle out of the chapel. Later that night, you and your grandmother stand on the staircase watching swaths of gentry folk into the parlor. You've done your father and our name proud today. 
wasn't easy. Yes, but you made it look easy, and that is all that matters. I rest now, and I can't take any more well-meaning condolences. Sleep well, Lady Grandmother. You curtsy to her and make your way to the parlor. But before you enter, you hear someone whispering your name from the door. Lady Bella. Mr. Harper. You see Mr. Harper opening the front door ever so slightly. I'm glad I caught you. The Countess would have my head if I came inside. I wanted to let you know if you need me, you could find me by the stables. You shouldn't be forced outside. My, my father would have wanted you here. Aye, but in this case, I'm grateful. In a way, tending the horses helps me through my own grief. I have a song I wish to share with you. Find me later if you wish. You can escape for a while. We can remember what your father... Together. That sounds lovely. Bye, Mabel. I will come. Oh, in more ways than one. I mean, what? Mr. Harper nods his head to you and closes the door. Now for all the guests. Take a deep breath and walk into the parlor. <clears throat> This is where we'll meet Miss Parsons and Mr. Sinclair and everyone else, and all of them will be diamond choices, won't it? Let's predict that and see what happens. Scan the room for familiar faces. When Mr. Chambers approaches you. Lady Pella, may God rest your father's soul and, and bless yours. Would have been grateful you came. The Earl was one of the first people who helped me navigate the society. I'm never on in forever indebted to him. I didn't know you were close. Oh, he made it easy for people to be close to him. I quality I greatly admire, and one that I see in you as well. Excuse me, my lady, I will leave you your guests now. You look around the parlor and see Mr. Sinclair and Prince Amin sharing stories, Miss Parsons frowning as Miss Sutton and Miss Rowman, and Mr. Morrowcaster brooding by himself. And, let's get this out of the way. You see Mr. Morrowcaster holding a glass of scotch, staring out the window by himself. Anybody want to buy me some scotch? We could do drunk streams. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Every time I die, take a drink! Mr. Malcaster, how are you feeling? Um, you really need to be sulky. No, 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 remember, we're supposed to be nice to him. How are you feeling? I don't think I realized how much you truly cared for him. Mr. Malcaster looks at you with puffy eyes. He swirls his glass of scotch and accidentally spills. He was the only father I ever truly knew. We share that, you know. This means I've lost two fathers. I didn't stop to think about that. It's fine. No one does. Wait. What? I'm so confused. Wait, did he? Was Mr. Morrowcaster not the official son? Oh, I forgot. Oops, never mind. You're a bastard, then. I mean... Why is he inheriting the Edgewater, then? I'm so confused with this stupid shit. Usually it's blood right. Anyway, sorry for your loss, for both of your losses. Rollcaster stares at the ground. I'm sorry for your loss, too. You fold your arms around Mr. Rollcaster and give him a hug. He resists it first, but then leans into your embrace. I'm around if you need me. Morrowcaster nods his head and finishes his glass of scotch. People saw you bond with Mr. Morrowcaster. I'll try my best for you as well, but first, I'll need more scotch. Morrowcaster staggers off to refill his glass. You turn to face the other guests in the parlor and see some of the guests clutching their hearts. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Let's get this shit out of the way, too. Walk over and join the small group of derps. I mean, women. Miss Parsons, Miss Sutton, Bowman. All the resources of Edgewater, and she still chose not to wear a morning gown. Ed <laughs> Diamonds are outside of the resources. And why are you wearing red, then? I know, it's a bit of a scandal. Miss Bowman, 
This sudden, I cannot believe you do. Are you gossiping about my appearance at my own father's funeral? Oh, Lady Bella. Miss Sutton wants to cheer you up. Really? Miss Sutton throws her arms around you. Get the fuck off me! You wore yellow! You look like a, like a giant fucking lemon. I mean, what? Oh, shh. I'm so, so sorry. You must be sad. No, really. Miss Sutton grips you even more tighter. Could you let go? Yes, Sutton, I am quite sad. You pat Miss Sutton's back until she releases you from her embrace. Would hearing the latest news about Miss Holloway's sister cheer you up? I won't let you turn this day into a gossiping event. It's shameful. Miss Bowman and Miss Sutton are stunned in the silence by Miss Parsons. Snap at them. Go, girl. I can't stand to be a part of all of this chatter and eyeing each other. Escape with me later, if you wish. I'd love to show you my favorite room at Edgewater. It always lifts my spirits. Annabelle. That sounds lovely. I'll keep that in mind as I make my rounds. Give Miss Parsons' hand a light squeeze and leave the group. So clearly, by what you told your father, if you only want to be with Mr. Sinclair or whoever you guys pick, clearly that's only as far as, well, what he heard. Prince Mead, Mr. Sinclair. Join Prince Mead, Mr. Sinclair, or deepen an anecdote. Do you remember that look on the Duke of Northumberland's land face? He wouldn't have picked his jaw up with both hands if he wanted. Sounds like a scandal. Ah, we are reminiscing about the time your father fell asleep in Parliament. That doesn't seem like father. Ah, we were both stunned when it happened. He must have been dreaming of the proceedings. When his name was called, he sat bolt upright and gave the proper speech without any fault. I can picture it now. Your father was a most honorable man. Even in his blunders. Glad his memory will live on in the stories. For years to come. A group of noble women pass by you. They look you over from head to toe before moving on. It cannot be easy to have so many eyes upon you when your heart is so heavy. If you need to get away, I can take you to Ledford Park. It's much more inviting than a room filled with gentry. The stars always provide me with great solace. If you would like to be go stargazing with me, I I'll will be here waiting. You both are too kind. I'll, I'll keep your offers in mind. They nod their heads to you, and you leave to make some more rounds of the parlor. What did I say? You look around for another group to chat with, but over here, more people whispering your name. You leave to get some air. I don't know if I can spend another moment here. Think back on the offers you received earlier in the night. I'm not reading this again, yes. Mr. Harper, Mr. Sinclair, Burns and Mead. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure none of us have, like, short-term memory loss. I'm sure we all remember from five minutes ago. It would be nice to get away for a while. Unlock these exclusive scenes with one or all of them. Because what says father's funeral like being a filthy slut? I mean... <laughs> Out of your daughter, oh god. Oh, we're done. <laughs> of your love interest to find solace in a unique way. Uh huh, and improve your relationships. Oh, 16 per times four. All right, we're done. Seriously, uh, that's uh, 64 diamonds. 64 diamonds. If you want to get around, retire to your rooms. Look over to the parlor, but a yawn stops you from walking towards it. This day has been full enough. I'm ready for some rest now. A few days later.
you, Briar and Pugsley, are walking down the hall together. You pause at the entrance to your father's bedroom. I know it's been a week, but it doesn't feel quite like he's gone. It's odd not seeing tea service or a fire in his room. Oh. You bend down and scratch Pugsley's ears. Shame he never got to meet you. Just as you're about to continue down the hall, a letter on the nightstand catches your eye. You take a few steps inside. What is this? I know this wasn't here before. Bella, we shouldn't be in here. It's from the Countess to the Bishop. <laughs> No. What does it say? <clears throat> okay, shall we read this in the in the in the in the bitch's name? Okay. Shh, shh, shh. Esteemed Bishop Monroe, I write you on behalf of my late husband, Vincent Earl of Edgewater. Upon his untimely passing, my husband mistakenly left our fortune and livelihood to an opportunist to a wrongfully believed to be his daughter. The Earl was not of sound mind when he made this judgment after the loss of our beloved son, Harry. The, the Earl's mind crumbled until it was taken completely by his death. We are grateful. He is now in a place of rest, but it is my utmost desire to cherish his the will he left and return Edgewater to its rightful heir. My son, Mr. Malcaster, I am implore you to honor this letter and the Earl's memory with your hasty reply. In gratitude, Countess Henrietta of Edgewater. I'm gonna shove you down a flight of fucking stairs now. She's slandering my father's legacy to steal my inheritance. That scheming snake. <laughs> I cannot believe. But really, you cannot believe. Look at her. How could she? Will people trust her? They won't. You've proven yourselves to the gentry. Now it's time to see where their allegiances lie. The Countess has so much power. As do you. You are the heir of Edgewater. Don't let her make you forget it. <clears throat> Saying he was an insound mind when he met me. That is unforgivable. You look around the room. I doubt this is the last of her tricks. We've got some more prying to do. Briar? Search with me. Search with me. Oh, search for me. Watch the door. Okay, watch the door. Briar gives you a sharp salute. Runs to the door. Leans against the door frame. You're enjoying this too much. Shh. Less talking, more searching. We can't let the Countess get away with anything. This will be the last of her scheme. If I can help it. You turn over everything in the room, desperately looking for something out of the ordinary, when all of a sudden you spot a dusty wooden box underneath your father's bed. Look at the marks in the dust. Looks like someone just moved this. I wonder where it was hiding before. You open the lid to find dozens of open letters, all addressed to your father and your mother's handwriting. How is this surprising? We knew. Well, I mean, we knew we they wrote one another, but... Countess Henrietta must have hid these from my father. Hear a creak in the hallway. I'm getting nervous, Bella. We shouldn't stay here much longer. Then we'll take this to my room. None of this should be in to hit Countess Henrietta's hands. Rush down the hall with Pugsley at your heels and Briar in tow. As soon as you reach a room, you fan the letters out on your bed. These span years. This one is dated back before I was born. <laughs> Far before your time, little Pugsley. You pick up a yellowing envelope and start to read aloud. <clears throat> okay. This was from... Yeah, the mother. The mother to the father. Um, Let's just read in our MC's voice. My dearest, I write to you with a mixed heart, for I have learned I am carrying a child born of our love. The thought of raising a child who is in part your blood still longing my heart, yet whoever they become, they will be another reminder of our mournful parting. I am petrified at the truth that I will be alone in this. 
what I would not give to have your voice steadying my nerves. Upon our annulment, your father warned me against riding, but I could not contain this tiding within me. Please know, I, I wish nothing from you. My greatest solace is knowing that our babe will, will be the sweetest possible memento of our time together. Brief though it was, I only wish that you could share it. Your heart forever, Mary. Finish reading and look up as the Briar is pulling Pugsley in her arms and wiping away tears. We must read them all. I wonder what happened. Oh, let me guess, Diamond Choice Incoming. There is only one way to find out. Read your mama's letters to father to discover you're about the side of their love story. I hate you. You hate us. You want us to pay diamonds for every stupid goddamn thing. What? The letters are in our possession? Nah. You hover your hand over the letters for a moment and then start to put them back in the box. What are you doing? They're gone, Raya. No amount of wallowing will bring them back. I'm ready to let the memories of their love lie with them. My heart has felt enough these past few days. Okay, okay, shh, shh, shh. The bishop, who is also simultaneously a man of law and a man of religion, could read these letters, see that your both mother and father were writing to one another about the love that they shared, and find rightfully that you are the heir of Edgewater. Thus, the whole drama in this whole stupid-ass book that we all can't can stand worth a shit would be thus void, and Pixelberry would have to end it right here and now. But, no, we'll keep this in suspense for the next five or so chapters. The love your parents shared was stronger than anyone could contain. Put the letters back into the box and close the lid. Right as the Countess walks in. What are you doing with my things? They're not your things, you bitch. Where you can react, she snatches the box of letters from you. Ah. Your things. You should have never hid these. I simply did what was needed to keep the peace of the estate. No one asked you to do that. You should have grabbed that one goddamn letter. I'm gonna smack the shit out of you. On the contrary, the situation begged for it. Your parents would fit for one another. Do you truly believe he would have gone with to you? And Briar, shoot up from your bed. Pugsley jumps down to your feet. <laughs> How dare you. It's all your fault they never got to be family. A sly smile spreads across the Countess's face. You can aim your harsh words at me, but now that I am simply a pawn in this game. If your mother truly wanted to be the Earl with the Earl, she never would have taken the money. Money? She would never. That, that can't be true. Oh, I hadn't realized you were naive. How else do you think someone of your mother's rank would have survived raising a child by herself? Because she was an opera singer, question mark? I know my mother and my father. He would have wanted us to both be provided for. If Mama took any money, she was doing the best she knew how. I refuse to let you and your empty threats stand between me and what is rightfully mine. Oh, so a father provides money and all of a sudden it's, aha, see? You speak as if I actually am afraid of you. You confidently take another step forward, forcing the Countess to step back. If you aren't afraid of me, why aren't you trying so hard to stop me? You take one more step forward, forcing the Countess to step backwards and out of your room. You hold up her letter to the bishop. We both know my father was of sound mind when he declared me heir. I'll never be able to prove it. But I can and I will. You're obviously desperate and your manipulations are no match for my claim. To the estate. The girl smile across his Countess Henrietta's face. You can slight me all you wish, but you will forever be a bastard. Countess Henrietta snatches the letter to the bishop out of your hand and slams the door in your face. You hear the lock click and the Countess laughs. Edgewater is mine. But I were trapped. Oh. We have to stop that letter. Oh, look at that! What did I just say for the next five chapters? 
<sighs> Next time on Desire and Agorum, will you be able to stop the Countess in time, or will you fall short? Okay, it doesn't matter if the letter arrives there or not. Like, think about it. Okay, she delivers the letter, and guess what? Then you go speak to the bishop and say, you know, hey... You were there when my father made the announcement. All the people were there. Was my father of a logical mind or not? At the time, he was not fighting off the fever. That fever didn't happen for quite some time, actually. So, how was he of lost mind? I don't think the bishop... I'm 99.9% .9 sure. I'm that sure. But the bishop is not going to fall for Henrietta Shedd. If it did, then it can go in front of legislation, which but is in front of the Duke, Mr. Sinclair, uh, Mr. Malcaster, like, basically the legislation, Prince of Mead, it would go in front of all those people who are part of the, the parliament. And thus it would be settled in a courtly manner where Prince, or, uh, Countess Henrietta would not be able to interfere. So, and people would be called to testify, and the dealings would be investigated, and etc. That's how these things worked. I wonder if Pixelberry will screw that up. <laughs> it's kind of like, I, 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 I just, I don't know if, I mean, Pixelberry can't even do this right. I want you to think about this. As of the last month, just think about the last week, let alone the last month. If you pick something, such as we had Mr. Moral, or uh, Mr. Sinclair, I keep saying Mr. Moralcaster for whatever goddamn reason, um, Mr. Sinclair was already holding her hands. Then we said something, Mr. Sinclair grabs both of your hands. Like, you, you already were. Do we have four hands? Was he gathering them all? Did our hands fall off? Like, I'm sorry, it's 3 a.m. now. I'm doing this. I, I'm more cynical, I guess? Or more just tired of Pixelberry's bullshit. Like, why can't there be... And this happens in chapters, okay? So when people say, no, chapters are a ripoff, no. Chapters, if I say, I'm holding your hand, and then you pick a choice, they, 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 guess what? It says, hold you closer. It should be a small, the tiniest of branches should go up. So if we were holding our hands, it should be pulls you closer. If it was we leaned our head on his shoulder, it should be puts an arm around you and, and holds you close. Or if it was, I forget what the third option was, where it wasn't even like any physical contact, then it would have been he took your hand and looked you in the eye or something. Why is it chapters can do that, episodes can do that, all these other visual novels can do that? Pixelberry, it just, eh, it takes your hands. Like, oh, okay. I mean, I'm sorry to rant here at the end. I'm just, Pixelberry's not going to listen to me. There's people who have reached out to me, plenty of fans, unfortunately, who have reached out to me and they're like, you have an ear to Pixelberry. Please say something. Hey, guys, guess what? I've said, I've literally private messaged employees of Pixelberry about a lot of issues, including some of these. Pixelberry has not listened to me, okay? I want, I want you guys to listen to very closely. Pixelberry does not give a flying F about any of you. I'm sorry to say that, but at this point, after two years and trying to give them feedback and they've never given a shit, never once have I got a reply back. I want you to think about that. Never once have I got a, yes, we'll do that. Yes, we'll consider it. It's it's usually, it's the same message that you guys get. Don't think just because I can private message some of the, the writers. Don't think. I send the feedback. Trust me. I send it. But it never gets acknowledged. It's never, wow, thanks for that feedback, etc. Pixelberry is the kind of company that literally will showcase YouTubers that are huge Bigger than me, bigger than F Hero, bigger than these YouTubers that do not give a flying F about us, Pixelberry, the fandom, the community, or even choices as a whole. I can think of two off the top of my head that did one video of choices. Were hosted on for for hey guys, look, this big YouTuber's doing choices. 
and they never touched choices ever again. They did one video. It was just so people would go and see their channel and go and see their video, and then it was Pixelberry going, oh, yeah, someone big's covering our shit. Wouldn't you think it would be smarter for them to go, we have these loyal channels that are that are covering our content, that are bringing a fandom, that are keeping people coming back, that are keeping, you know... Wouldn't you think they would give, should give more to us, the YouTubers, that are actually covering their shit every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday? Shouldn't we be the people who are in the spotlight? No. No. And it saddens me. It depresses me. It depresses me, and I, I'm saying this, it depresses me, uh, and I'm sorry about ranting, but it also depresses me that the fact that I have covered so many better games, and you guys... Uh, I, like, there's a handful of you that have checked them out, and then there's a large portion of you that have not. And that saddens me. That depresses me. Because, for instance, Detroit Becomes Human. I did two playthroughs of that, because that's how good of a game it was. Had plenty of people tune in with on stream. Had plenty of people watch both versions. But the vast majority of the community... If I could, watch, if I could have every single Choices player sit down and watch just one playthrough of Detroit Becomes Human, they would be like, you know what? This has opened my eyes to what an actual choice means, where choices actually do matter. Like, just go watch Detroit Becomes Human, just once. You will see where choices actually matter, and the simplest of choices, like picking up trash, will actually mean something. And guess what? The studio that did Detroit Becomes Human is a smaller studio than Pixelberry. Just saying. And they did a ton more. In the same, if not less, time frame than Pixelberry has done all of these books. Just saying. So without further ado, don't know what else to say. You know my outro. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.